Welcome to The Listening Square. I'm Pastor Dean. And I'm Amy. Thanks for joining us. And uh, the basis of the texts we're using for The Listening Square teaching is from John 10, 27, where Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. And uh, just to go back to the text, my Jesus, uh, Jesus says to his disciples, my sheep listen uh, to my voice. So God expects uh, us to hear him. He yeah. is speaking to us. I know them, he says, and therefore uh, he knows you. He knows us. He knows us as a community and he wants a relationship with us. And so he, he uh, that's real and personal and he wants us to reciprocate with a, a good, healthy relationship. And uh, then he has an expectation that we will, we've heard him, we know him, and he knows us and we'll follow him. And that comes in the way we obey. Right. You know, so Pastor Dean has talked before about this um, importance or this amount of information that can be um, really contained within one shape or one icon. And so for this particular class, we're using a square. And so this is the listening square. And as we've talked about previously, the Bible is really the first place we go when we want to hear God's voice. Uh, the Bible is the written revelation of God himself. And we can trust it. It is alive. It is active. The Holy Spirit works through it. And it really is the foundation for us hearing his voice. Second is prayer. And so we've talked, we talked about this last time. If you haven't listened to that video, you can go back and listen to it. But you know, we understand that we are to bring our requests before God. In this class, we're really focusing more on a um, relational listening prayer. And we talked about uh, previously, these six really practical steps on how to listen to God in prayer. Do you want to go through those? Sure. <clears throat> so start by, they're really simple, practical, as Amy was saying. So give thanks. Rest in the Father's love. He loves you. Just rest. Fix your eyes on Jesus. It's all right to use your imagination, your mind. God gave you a mind. Intentionally welcome the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Ask God to speak. Ask God to speak to you. And then pray in response. So if you really want to delve into that more, look for our previous YouTube video. We talked about a lot of, you know, we explain each of those uh, further in more detail and then give some scripture references as well. So check that out. For this week, we're really talking about um, obstacles that we encounter as we seek to listen to God's voice. So. If you would, just take a moment, pause this video, and really reflect on what problems have you encountered as you have sought to hear God's voice. Did you come up with any, Amy? <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, we have you know, encountered plenty of problems along the way. And so when Pastor Dean and I prepared for this teaching, we listed a bunch of yeah. them, and we're going to go through a few of those today. And uh, the first we came up with is the issue of priority. I, uh, and, and it might come out of my mouth or out of in my mind as, I really don't have time uh, in prayer. I don't have time to pray and listen to God. Or I don't have time to read the word and sit with the word today because I have, I'm so important and I have so many other things to do that I just frankly don't have time. Yeah, right. I mean, this is a really, really common experience. We tend to lead busy lives and so um, things get pushed to the side and yeah. finding that really quiet space to listen to God 
it can be difficult. But um, Matthew has something, or Jesus has something great to say about that in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. He says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. I think the, uh, the issue of first, I mean, we want to have a priority. What are your priorities? And uh, in my life, one of the things that I've learned to do over time is to, uh, first thing in the morning, to set aside time for me to spend time in my relationship with Jesus, in his word, reading his word, and then listening to him and to his voice. Right. You know, in the kingdom, we have time for everything God has called us to do. God is a God of abundance. And we, we view time as this precious resource. But there is enough to do everything that God has called you and I to do. And that is including uh, spending time with him in his word and listening to him. I love that. We have time. I have time to do everything. Let's see, try to, let me, it's okay. I, I'm just learning this. So, I mean, it's not a phrase, the phrase I've used before. Tell me again, Amy. So I have time to do everything God has called me. Why don't to you do. just say it with me? I have time to do everything God has called me to do today. Yeah. And take a breath. And, and that is right. So I can spend the first of my day and give a priority to God to both read his word and uh, to listen to him. Absolutely. So uh, another thing that we encounter when we're trying to listen to God's word is uncertainty issues. You know, we, we uh, have some doubt about how to distinguish God's voice from other voices. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I know that that uh, in my you know in my prayer time, um, I hear, especially if it if it has to do with I'm I'm out in public and I feel I have a sense uh, that God might be speaking to me about something, and then I'm like, well, is that God? Is that not God? How yeah, do right. I know? Is that the circumstance that I've had? Right. Did I right. conjure that up myself? Well, I, I often think of uh, Dickens, uh, The Christmas Carol, uh, where Scrooge says, you know, uh, maybe that was the potato <laughs> soup or something I ate the day before. The pizza. Yeah, yeah right. right. Well, well yeah. and the thing is, is that when we have those doubts, then it can cripple or um, paralyze our ability to obey. Yeah. And um, but here's what I think. We have the Holy Spirit, Amen. and we can recognize God's voice. And I think that oftentimes we have a pretty good sense as to, you know, whether this voice is from God. But the reality is, and what we really have to remember is that the written word is to be our guide and our foundation. And any sense, impression, any word that we feel like we have received from the Holy Spirit should be confirmed here. It should be something that is a principle that reflects God's nature and character that has already been revealed in his Amen. word. I, uh, to go along with that just a, a little, I, I go back to the um, John 10, 27, the foundation for all of our teachings on the learning square is Jesus. You know, Jesus says, my sheep know my voice. Uh, or my sheep listen to my voice. Yeah. I know them. And, it, and it, when I know Jesus, and I know him primarily through scripture, when I know Jesus, when I know his teaching, when I know his heart, I know his character, then, uh, then, I, then I can have more confidence. Yeah, right. You can also recognize yeah. His voice, And I mean, I think even if you just sort of take an illustration based on that John 10, 27 verse, this idea that, you know, a sheep knows the shepherd. Yeah. You know, a sheep would readily recognize the voice of the shepherd. And you and I can be good listening sheep and learn to recognize God's voice as well. How true. Well, another obstacle would be uh, perfection problems. The belief that I'm afraid I might get it wrong. I might, yeah, yeah, I might get it wrong and then I'd screw up everything. God would be upset at me, whatever. 
whatever comes out of that, um, that I would be, it'd be a problematic. So. Yeah, and talk about another really paralyzing thing that when we have this fear that we might get it wrong, then we tend to do nothing. Right. We tend to stop listening. We tend to stop obeying because that fear sort of paralyzes us. And um, what we can do to sort of counteract this is to, um, to begin to move forward in what God has called us to do and to then allow the Holy Spirit to direct us as we, as we try it out. You know, God knows us. He loves us and uh, he is okay with us practicing. Yeah, and I, I think the word practice is the where I go with this is that when I started switching from I, I have to do, yeah. uh, you know, do what I'm hearing to I have to practice listening and that, that, that then comes into I, I, my obedience is a practice. Right. Like uh, physicians practice. They are always thinking about practicing. And um, no matter how talented they are or how much skill they have. So if I, I just can want to continually remind myself I'm a disciple of Jesus. Right. I'm not done with it. We're still and learning. I'm still learning. I'm still a child of the Lord. Yeah. And I need to just think of practicing. It's okay then when I make a mistake to practice. And uh, yeah. Yeah. So the verse that comes to mind with that is... Uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 19 through 22. Do not quench the Holy Spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. So, I, because I, I want to know Scripture, then I can reject evil. And I want to hold on to what's good. And Scripture gives me a, a place uh, to start testing what I am hearing. Yeah. In the way God speaks um, and what he would say and what he wouldn't say, he's not going to tell me to do something evil. Right, exactly. Yeah. And in that practice, we also practice listening and then we practice obeying. And what I found for myself is, is I'd rather err on the side of obedience. Yeah. And because when I have that, that doubt sort of surface and I give way to the doubt, it kind of, it leans or it leads to a, this quenching or this quieting of the spirit. And I find that then I don't hear him as often. And so I've, what I've sort of done is I'd rather obey yeah. and risk That's the awesome. possibility of getting it that. wrong. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So, uh, you know, just... Think about that for yourself and, and um, in your life. So here's a, uh, another reflection question for you. What is an obstacle that you have overcome in your practice of hearing God? And uh, just, you know, take a moment to reflect on that, maybe journal about that uh, experience. So another uh, pitfall that we can run into is a, con is a comparison trap. You know, we, can, we say things to ourselves like, I don't hear God like so-and-so. And so, -and -so. And so um, it can, we can kind of lead to some shame on our part. I tend to be a thinker and somewhat in, therefore I'm, I tend to be rational, not that non-thinkers aren't rational. <laughs> Um, I tend to be more rational than emotional. And years back, one of uh, the colleagues I had the opportunity to work with was Pastor Dave Martin. And Dave, who's a feeler, very pastoral and uh, very uh, feeling-oriented. And he also had a, a, a very prophetic, yeah. uh, could lean easily into the prophetic. And when he would pray, you know, when I first got to know him, when he first came alongside me in the, in the church here, and he starts to pray, I'd be like, dang, I want to pray. I can't pray. I want to pray like him, which in a way was, you know, yeah, spurred right, me right. to, to mm -hmm. uh, begin to practice more and more. But also I probably felt some shame. Yeah, right. You know, and I, I 
you know, talking about something I had to get over, that would be one of those obstacles that I right. really had to work with. You know, the other sort of experience that we have is that we maybe minimize how we personally mm -hmm. experience the Holy Spirit it, when we compare ourselves to others. Um, you know, so I find myself in a similar camp to Pastor Dean in the sort of thinking and um, rational uh, thought process. And I can remember hearing people's experience of the Holy Spirit and they would be you know, emotional and weeping and these beautiful <laughs> expressions of, of how they heard God and how God painted this beautiful picture for them or how they had this beautiful vision. And I just thought, okay, that, I totally don't have that experience, you know? And sometimes, and it took me a while to understand that God speaks to us individually and he has made us different. And so then he speaks to us differently. And so what we don't want to do is end up minimizing an, an impression or when we experience God's peace or when maybe God brings to us a verse of scripture, that that is no less of an experience of God or no less of a way for us to hear yeah. God than someone's really spectacular experience. Yeah. So don't fall into the comparison trap. <laughs> Amen. Stay away from that one. So I, um, a scripture from 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the, Holy, of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Usually, we, when we read this text, often this text is used and rightfully used to talk about how we take care of ourselves physically. You know, we're, we're supposed to, we are the temple of God. The Holy Spirit resides within us. Therefore, we should take care of our bodies. Very true. And I hope you're taking care of yourself at this moment and uh, over this time. But also for, for this idea of comparison, God the Holy Spirit is desiring, is living within you, the believer, and is filling you. And just as much as he's living in Amy or in me or in whoever you might be comparing yourself to, God, the Holy Spirit, lives within you. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and he wants to speak to you. And that's enough. So another um, uh, issue, know, sure, issue that we can encounter is sort of these faulty expectations. Um, when we've heard God speak to us, sometimes we can begin to think that that's the only way God's going to speak to us, and so we might fall into this faulty expectation: God has, speaks to me only like He speaks to me in the past. You know, so we might get used to a particular pattern of how he's spoken to us or a particular environment and then miss if he wants to give us different nudges or different revelations. And, um, and we, we can box God in yeah, to those right. by, by those very expectations. Yeah. And another way we can box God in is uh, the second faulty expectation that we came up with, which is that God speaks to me only during, and for me, that you know, I, I have a healthy rhythm uh, in which I, when I get up in the morning after I get a cup of coffee, it's, it's Jesus and coffee, not, not in priority, but it's <laughs> Jesus and coffee and the Bible and me sitting down and reading his word and picturing him, fixing my eyes on him, and listening to him, which is awesome. It's great. And God often speaks to me during that time. But then what I don't want to do is where I say, well, that's it. Right. You know, I, I've done my half hour, my 15 minutes, whatever time, quiet time. And you do want to have a quiet time in the morning because yeah. you do want to set your priority 
as Jesus being the center of that. But, but it's not the only time. So therefore, I'll often, I'll leave that space and say, well, I'll check that off the box. <laughs> I'm done with that, you know, and go on to the other things right. I have to do. Well, and the reality is, is that if we are listening, God can speak to us at any moment right. through the day because he is Emmanuel and he is there with us. And we want to be good followers of him and to be directed at any moment and any time. And sometimes our faulty expectations can be just like, well, this is my time, you know, for li this is my listening time. Or the other can be, if we have set aside that time and we find ourselves in a dry period mm. where, you know, perhaps the scripture isn't coming alive to us or perhaps we aren't hearing as clearly. And then we might walk away from that time feeling really discouraged or disappointed and believing that since he didn't speak to me during that time, then, then that was it. But the reality is, is that any moment during the day is a time that we could hear from God. Amen. So what do we do with... Uh all of these issues. Well, <laughs> yeah, you want right. to go? Sir, so, um, you know, many of these things uh, can be resolved with repentance, right? There, there's some pattern of thinking that we need to turn away from. And then to hear the word and obey. I, I you know, re repent and believe might just sound really simple. And actually, <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah, right. Uh, so that when I get caught up in comparison, comparing myself to others, I just simply need to remind myself that the Holy Spirit resides within me, the King of glory. Right. And everything I need, I already have. It's this idea of repentance of changing our direction. Yeah. And a lot of these particular stumbling blocks have to do with our mindset. Right. You know, and so we've got the word of God and we know the truth. And so repent, let's remind ourselves and turn away from those, um, these stumbling blocks, these um, traps and to walk in, obey in the direction obey. that God has for yeah. us. Yeah, it's, it, it's more than just repenting or turning and then not moving forward. Yeah, let's move. We, yeah, we heard a wise person say, it's really hard to uh, steer your car when you're not moving. Right. And uh, that's true. So we need to be moving forward, following God. We need to be listening. And we need to not be, to remind ourselves continually that we are called to practice. Absolutely. Obedience, practice obedience. So we hope that you'll take this opportunity to lean in and begin to practice listening to God. And we wanna, before we end right now, what I'd like to do is we're gonna, I'm gonna pray for you as you listen. Holy Spirit, I pray that you open our hearts and minds to you. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that you desire to speak to us, to know us, and that you call us to follow you in your kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thanks. <laughs>